whenever a spree killer goes on a killing spree, there's always a big talk, you know, about in the media about gun control and uh, mental health and a whole bunch of other issues. But what I want to do is I want to talk about spree killers. Now, spree killers are mass murderers. Mass murderers happen all at once. Like, you know, what Stephen Paddock did in Las Vegas, what Omar Moulton did, Moulton did at Pulse nightclub in Florida, <clears throat> what um, Charles Whitman did at the University of Texas in Austin with the tower, what Col Columbine in Virginia Tech. Uh, what we, and then s serial killers are people who kill one by one, like Ted Bundy, John Wayne Gacy, Jeffrey Dahmer, you know, Ed Kemper, Gary Ridgeway, the Green River Killer, the Boston Strangler, and Jack the Ripper. And, uh, let's go over a few characteristics of spree killers. Narcissism. They believe that they, they're in love with themselves, basically. They're in love with themselves. They love themselves. And, uh, there can also be, you know, they often ha ha don't fit in socially. They may have a, have a few. What's interesting is that I read somewhere that they're actually very rarely loners in the strictest sense of the term. They often have are so socially awkward. They can't they can't form relationships in a functional way. At least not in a functional way. They may have a few dysfunctional relationships and dysfunctional friendships, etc., etc., etc. And uh, they usually have a fascination with weapons. That 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 one's pretty obvious. I mean, they they obviously they gotta collect weapons and all that shit and gear for their final retribution against the world that rejects them. And uh, we also have misanthrop. Mis they're often misanthropes. They hate humanity, um, and they pretty much want to kill everyone on the planet. It was once said that, it, that a spree killer kills the whole world, world at once. A serial killer kills the whole, kills the same person over and over and over again. Until they're stopped, of course. And, uh, what we see here is there are also more traits. Such as, um, they often like, you know, violent video games, movies, and all that stuff. And uh, they have a generally have a very rich. They also have a very rich fantasy life where they fantasize about being powerful and divine and all that stuff, and just being the hero in their own movie, so to speak. And they obviously take it too far. And yes, a lot of them are mentally ill. Um, they often are detached from the rest of humanity. But most mentally ill people, contrary to popular belief, are not violent. And, uh, so I just want to make that clear. Now, going in more in depth, we will talk, talk about this at greater lengths right now. They have a contrary to popular belief. They don't all have the same motive or the same reason for hating society. They, there, there's a vast number of reasons. Like, <clears throat> and some of them, like Nidal Hassan, uh, Dylan Roof, and uh, even Elliot Roger, they do these things to further their political political objectives, i.e., terrorism. That's what terrorism is. Um, like Elliot Roger was kind of the spring, the the uh, missing link between a terrorist. And a regular and a run-of-the-mill sp crazy spree killer, because he had this whole political ideology set up. You can check out my videos on him that deal specifically with him, and uh, you can check other people's videos too for more information, or just read his damn manif read his damn manifesto. It's more of a biography, but anyway, um, see, um, <clears throat> what? happens is, is that 
these people generally are very, very angry for at the world for real or perceived wrongs. They tend to collect injustices. They make a list and they, they think about these things. They brood over them. And what happens is, is most people think that these guys just snap. Okay, that they just snap and that's it. They'll just go wild and just start, you know, shooting people at random one day. They just wake up one day and decide, you know what, I'm going to kill a whole bunch of people. But the reality is, is, is that these things can take, these things, well, they do take a long time. They take, when, when you see a spree killing take place, there is a long, it's a long time in the making. It's just merely the climax of a dis of a lot of dysfunction, and um, what the, what they want is power and control. For one for one day, they would rather be you know. They're usually at the bottom of the barrel in terms of social standing, and uh, they are often what people would describe as losers, or outcasts, or whatever. But not necessarily loners. Um, they try to fit in, but can't. And so, they go to this extreme of wanting to kill as many people as possible, and usually themselves at the end of it. And uh, they basically decide that they have nothing to live for, and would rather live one day as this huge term as this basically this terminator the star of their own movie or whatever then deep then live the next however many decades they have decades as a lone outcast who is just another face in the crowd to a lot of spree killers the fact that they are just like everybody else or um that they are anonymous or obscure, they're just nobody, that is just so horrifying to them that they're not getting the recognition that they are nobody and they want some recognition, even if it's bad recognition. I mean, they think about it, they want to, they, they decide that they want to commit suicide and they want to usually want to kill as many people as they can on the way out. And, um, it's just their revenge against the world. Another thing that I've noticed throughout my research of, of spree killers is that the, the more um, ground they cover, the wider geographical range of their killings, the lower the body count. Elliot Rogers, for example, he had a pretty decent sized range getting in that car and going on drive-by shootings and all that crap. But he didn't um, kill very many people. He killed six and wounded 14, and then he shot himself, of course. Then there was um, Omar Moulton, the Virginia, the, uh, Steve Paddock, and I can't pronounce that guy's name, who did Virginia Tech. But they chose closed-in environments <coughs> that had a lot of people in them. And they got a pretty good body count going, and that's the recipe for, for destruction, a closed in space and a lot of people, and also having the, the weapon, that's more important than having what kind of weapon they're using, because a clo because closed in space a lot can happen in a very short time, and if there's a whenever there's a spree killing, the police always show up full bore, and um, they get the police's undivided attention. So they only have a time limit. They have a time limit from when they begin to when the police arrive, which is usually in a few minutes, which is a long time in a firefight, but. 
it only get it doesn't give them they don't have all day to do their thing and um also these people have got to a point where they no longer care if they live or die that means that the world cannot really do anything to them because the fear often keeps a lot of these people in check for a long time fear of death fear of going to prison for the rest of their life and getting pounded in the ass forever uh, that um, some people can't comprehend what that's like and they most of them would, would most people would choose to go on living their normal life I know I would choose that I like being alive and I got a lot to live for however that only works if you have something to live for just to keep going on living and there's a lot of people that think that they don't and these things a lot of these uh, factors need to be amplified if so that they if they're going to end in a massacre rather than just a simple suicide and the reason speaking of suicide the reason why they um, kill themselves is because they have acquired the power that they feel that they so richly deserve and they don't want to give it up because the police can take it from will take it from them they want the, their their act of shooting themselves in the head or whatever is their way of um, proving to themselves and the world that they have are in total control they are in control of their own destiny they don't they decide when they will die not the police not the courts they will just die go in the ground and that's it or be cremated or whatever they're usually a lot of times they're cremated because they don't because their families don't want to have to deal with you know all the people coming to mess up their graves and crap like that and um they just want to basically achieve the infamy and infamy of this stuff and gain immortality and recognition as a result because they go from being obscure into being on it every news channel YouTube videos will be made about them news articles all that stuff and it's like all of a sudden recognition and power become more important to them than living and uh, spree killing is a very easy way to achieve total infamy to achieve infamy the catch is is that you is that you're going to get caught or you're going to die usually it's the latter they usually choose the latter and um, because of that um, they decide <coughs> that it's basically better to live as a predator for one day than to live the rest of their lives as prey and remember how I said it takes a lot of time for these um, spree killings to happen it does because often it begins there, there, there comes a planning phase because it takes they often spend months or even years planning this because to them it become a lot of times it becomes like it's going like a job or a career or a life's pursuit basically and um, what they do is they often towards the end they often see as the killing with the killing spree that they're that they're about to unleash as the, the purpose of their life the one thing that they were put on this earth to do and 
they pour everything they have into it. And most people, they don't understand because they want to um, just keep going on living their, their normal lives. And what we find here is that a lot of these people that they're looking for the they want to basically be just out of this world they want to see the end of it and they want to cause as much pain and carnage as they can on the way out and um, they basically decide that life isn't worth living but before they go before they leave they want to make a name for themselves they want to be infamous and burned into everyone's mind forever. And that's what happens. Sometimes that they have a little more specialized objectives, like Charles Whitman. He really wanted to humiliate, humiliate his father. He killed his wife and his mother, then drove to um, Texas, the University of Texas in Austin, and then went up to the tower shot a few people on the stairs, then, as we all know, he started blasting, blasting at people with sniper fire until the, the um, citizens of Texas came in with their guns and everything like that and uh, traded fire with him. He was pinned down and the police eventually killed him. Uh, he seemed to hate his father and he humiliated his father. He wanted all the cameras to be pointed at his father. So, and of course we have terrorist attacks and things like that that are done with firearms, much like a spree killer. And that is pretty much how the, all I have to say about spree killers right now. I will be back probably with another video about spree killers at some point. But for now, this one will have to do. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And as always, leave a donation. They're greatly appreciated. Thank you. Hmm.